ஹலோ எவ்ரி ஒன் திஸ் இஸ் அசோக் குமார் ஃப்ரம் சிஎஸ்சிஐ டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் மெட்ஸ் காலேஜ் ஸோ ஐ எம் டுடே கோயிங் டு கிவ் அ வீடியோ லெக்சர் ஆன் பிக் டேட்டா அனாலிட்டிக்ஸ் வித் ஹடூக் ஸோ ஐ தேங்க் அவர் டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் அண்ட் தி மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் ஃபார் ப்ரொவைடிங் அ குட் ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டி டு லேர்ன் த்ரூ லெக்சர்ஸ் ஸோ லெட் மீ கிவ் யூ தி அஜெண்டா ஆஃப் டுடேஸ் வீடியோ so first one is uh, the today's agenda is i am going to give introduction about the big data and big data analytics uh, then the key aspects of uh, hadoop and hadoop core components uh, and the major two components of uh, hadoop core are hdfs and map reduce so that is the agenda for uh, today's class so let's uh, look at the uh, this uh, in agendas one by one so first one is big data analytics so we all know about what is big data so big data is a huge volume of uh, data which is being collected uh, in the uh, era of internet of uh, world so uh, the big data analytics uh, is often the complex process of examining a uh, huge volume of data so why we are going to examine the huge volume of data to uncover the informations such as hidden information or hidden patterns and uh, correlations among the data and market trends and customer preferences so in simple words uh, the major objective of uh, big data analytics uh, is to uncover the information which is not present before so we are going to uh, find using the huge volume of data that is being collected we are going to uh, uncover uh, certain hidden insights from the data and we are using those data to Uh, help make an informed decision so in uh, today's world each and uh, every organization like uh, you might have heard about the uh, like uh, video streaming giants like netflix and amazon and uh, online uh, platforms online uh, like uh, retail platforms such as flipkart amazon everyone uh, these big organizations which leveraging the use of uh, big data they are collecting and using the, uh, this big data analytics they are going to make informed decision making so which will be very helpful for the growth of their organization or in case if they want to attract a new customers so using this uh, historical and a huge volume of uh, current data they are going to identify uh, certain in- insights uh, from those data that is all about big data analytics so uh, why hadoop here i have mentioned hadoop is a major tool because we are going to do big data analytics uh, using hadoop because one of the major reason in today's world 90% of the companies uh, which are looking for a hadoop as a tool for big data analytics is because it is an open source and written in java so hadoop uh, being an open source uh, framework it is free to use uh, re- redistribute and even you can modify the codes so 90% of the companies leveraging this uh, open source uh, flexibility and using the hadoop environment so originally hadoop was written in java uh, that allows actually a distributed processing otherwise we can call it as a distributed uh, computing so we all know that distributed what is distributed computing which is like uh, Uh, the processing uh, can be done at multiple uh, computing nodes which uh, spread across different uh, locations as a uh, clusters so the major concept of uh, distributed processing is uh, data whatever the big data we are collecting those data can be stored across multiple clusters of thousands of nodes and uh, using those uh, data we can use uh, execution engine to execute uh, parallelly as well so that is the uh, true power of uh, hadoop where it is a distributed architecture uh, so we can uh, store the information uh, across uh, all the uh, 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 data nodes which are attached to a particular cluster so uh, it is originally designed to scale up uh, from a single servers to thousands of machines each offering local computation and storage 
and uh, uh, unlike uh, like uh, big giants like microsoft and other companies uh, hadoop has uh, one uh, advantage where uh, it is not uh, kind of a centralized machine where hadoop uses all the machines as a local machines local machines means each and every laptops or desktop computers can be at- attached to the cluster in a distributed environment and using those commodity hardware itself we can uh, use uh, that for processing as well as storage that is the power of hadoop where uh, we no need of a big uh, super computing or high performance computing ability with the normal computing clusters we can achieve big data analytical processing uh, that is the true power of a hadoop uh, when it comes to big data analytics so let's move on to the uh, key aspects of hadoop so what are the major benefit of hadoop so we are going to cover uh, here so the one of the major benefit of uh, hadoop as i explained previously it is an open source so which means that it is free to download you can download any hadoop versions from online free of cost and you can use it and you can also contribute which which means that we can also modify certain aspects and under the hadoop uh, apache uh, software license we can get the uh, approval from uh, hadoop apache foundation and we can distribute it also and next one is frameworks so everything here is a frameworks in a distributed environment uh, which means that hadoop is not a single tool inside the hadoop you can have uh, multiple uh, tools available so hadoop is kind of a large framework uh, inside we have uh, multiple hadoop uh, actually currently hadoop contains like more than uh, 10 to 20 different tools which can be used for various tasks for big data analytics again big data analytics is not just a single task uh, it contains multiple tasks need to be performed so depends on the organizational needs they can integrate whatever the tools which are inbuilt in uh, hadoop framework so uh, the mo- major impact Uh, factor uh, respect to hadoop is it is not a single tool it is a framework which is a collection of tools then next one is the backbone of uh, the hadoop environment is distributed because as i earlier said uh, hadoop not execute everything on a single machine like a supercomputer hadoop evenly distributes its workload to the cluster of small small uh, nodes which are connected through high performance uh, network uh, across the various locations so if you are want to execute or if you want to store very huge uh, volume of data it is not dependent on a single uh, core computer it will evenly distribute the data across uh, thousands of uh, uh, nodes which are connected with the hadoop architecture the next very very important aspect of this uh, hadoop is that massive storage yes the massive means uh, here we are not uh, dealing uh, with like uh, Uh, uh like mbs megabytes or gigabytes or terabytes of data hadoop has a very large number of clusters and uh, even thousands ten thousands of uh, nodes are connected with it so the storage capacity of those kind of uh, architecture is very very massive so it stores colossal amount of data across nodes uh, of low cost commodity hardware as like a simple computers so uh, evenly you can store uh, yeah, like imagine you having uh, information or a data set which has a very huge collection like even yotta bytes and zeta bytes you can store uh, it can accommodate any number of uh, uh, storage irrespective of the capacity it is very highly scalable and it support very massive storage because why massive storage the simple answer is today everything is online all the companies are uh, on online they have social media pages and they have uh, tracking each and every customers information 24 into 7 so the every second the information is collected for example if you want to do a social media analytics for example using facebook so imagine uh, that facebook might have more than 1 billion users and each user post a simple comment on every day imagine the amount of data which is being collected so uh, it simply uh, uh, like within an hour uh, more than 1 terabytes of data being collected so if you want to do uh, real time data analytics we need very very massive storage structure 
that is what Hadoop is basically all about. It has a storage access to huge volume of data where you can even store zettabytes of data. Second important aspect uh, regarding to big data analytics is once you store the data, you want to do some execution of data and you want to find some certain kind of an insight, hidden patterns. For that, you need processing. So again, uh, faster processing in another important criteria uh, in respect to the Hadoop environment. So for faster processing means large amount of data is processed in parallel, yielding quick response. How? Because uh, again, I uh, earlier said Hadoop architecture is not based on the centralized architecture. It is distributed. So whenever you want to store the data in the Hadoop architecture, it is not going to store the entire amount of data in a single machine because it is uh, based on the distributed architecture. So each and uh, every information will be split into smaller blocks and these blocks will be spread across different clusters, which means whenever you want to processing also, whenever you are submitting a very big task, like one terabytes of task data sets you are submitting and you want to do a certain processing on it, Hadoop won't process the entire file as a single file. It will uh, divide the file into a very, very smaller chunks or we can call it as a blocks and each blocks will be sent to uh, individual nodes in the cluster. So the amount of data that is being executed by individual machines are very smaller only. So which is uh, simultaneously parallelly each and every block will be executed in different nodes, for example, thousands of nodes in a Hadoop uh, cluster. So it yields uh, because it uh, works by cluster computing and in parallel, which means that everything will be executed simultaneously at the same time. For example, block one, block two, block three, etc. Like that each block will be stored on different nodes and simultaneously executed and the final result will be uh, sending back to the master node. In this uh, uh, kind of an architecture, the processing is done by simultaneously. So it is very quick. So that is all about the key benefits of using Hadoop. So Hadoop core components. In this slide, we are going to see about the, what are the core components which are required to execute the Hadoop engine. So the basically there are uh, uh, very, uh, these are the very essential component uh, and we can say it as a minimum requirement which are required to execute the basic functionality of Hadoop engine. So the first major uh, Hadoop uh, uh, tool which is used for uh, starting up Hadoop is called Hadoop Common. So uh, Hadoop Common is a set of libraries, Java libraries and utilities which are required for providing access to the file system and OS level abstractions. And Hadoop Common is also very important uh, uh, libraries which contains important libraries which are used to start up the Hadoop which means uh, Hadoop Common is the major uh, core libraries which are helpful for uh, booting up the Hadoop engine. So without these libraries we cannot start the uh, Hadoop environment. So the next important uh, tool inside the uh, Hadoop Common is uh, Hadoop distributed file system. Uh, which is a storage uh, medium for Hadoop environment. So we have already covered uh, Hadoop contains two important component. One is storage, another one is processing for big data analytics. So if you want to do the big data analytics, we are going to deal with not uh, MBs or uh, terabytes or gigabytes of data. We are dealing uh, here in real time like uh, zettabytes, uh, zottabytes of uh, data to store uh, such a huge amount of uh, data we need a very massive storage architecture. So HDFS is, is all about that architecture. So it is like a distributed file system, which means that whatever the information we are going to store in the Hadoop environment, HDFS will uh, spread across the information everywhere uh, in all the clusters which are connected to the uh, Hadoop environment. So uh, simply say, uh, Hadoop distributed environment contains uh, multiple number of uh, clusters and each clusters uh, might contain like thousands of uh, ten thousands of nodes attached to it. So HDFS is the uh, the fundamental storage uh, uh, area storage architecture for Hadoop environment. Next one is MapReduce. MapReduce is actually a processing engine for uh, Hadoop environment. So 
இட் இஸ் யூஸ்ட் டு எக்ஸிக்யூஷன் ஆஃப் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் ஜாப்ஸ் ஆர் ஆன் பேஸ்ட் ஆன் தி லார்ஜ் டேட் அசெட்ஸ் ஸோ இட் இஸ் பேசிக்கலி டிபெண்ட் ஆன் தி யான் பேஸ்டு சிஸ்டம் விச் ஐ எக்ஸ்பிளைன் லேட்டர் ஸோ மேப் ரெடியூஸ் இஸ் த ஃபண்டமெண்டல் டூல் இன் சைட் தி ஹடூப் விச் இஸ் யூஸ்டு டு ரைட் ஹடூப் ரிலேட்டட் அப்ளிகேஷன்ஸ் ஆஸ் வெல் ஆஸ் விச் இஸ் யூஸ்டு டு எக்ஸிக்யூஷன் ஆக்ட் ஆஸ் அன் எக்ஸிக்யூஷன் என்ஜின் வேர் திஸ் இஸ் த மெயின் என்விரான்மெண்ட் வேர் ஹடூப் எக்ஸிக்யூட்ஸ் ஆல் இட்ஸ் ஆல் த ஜாப்ஸ் சப்மிட்டட் பை தி கிளைண்ட் then another one is called hadoop yet another resource negotiator which has been uh, recently integrated into the hadoop uh, environment uh, which will be acting as a job scheduling and cluster resource management which means that yarn is the basic resource manager for the uh, hadoop environment and uh, if you see history of uh, hadoop uh, evolution uh, there are uh, currently three different versions of hadoop are there sir like namely hadoop version 1 hadoop version 2 and hadoop version 3 so in original hadoop version 1 uh, yarn was not there uh, all the task related to execution uh, coordination everything taken care by the map reduce from the version uh, hadoop uh, version 2 everything related to uh, execution and uh, cluster resource management can combine together in the name of yarn so yarn is evolved from hadoop version 2.0 and the latest version of hadoop is hadoop 3.4.0 where yarn also present uh, it uh, doesn't eliminate the map reduce entirely what yarn does is it has integrated map reduce framework uh, sorry map reduce tool inside the yarn environment which means that Uh, hadoop yarn also contains the map reduce which is used for uh, execution uh, task so current versions of hadoop you cannot see the map reduce as a separate uh, tool which will be automatically integrated inside uh, hadoop yarn and hadoop yarn takes care of execution uh, which means that processing of uh, jobs submitted by the client as well as cluster resource management which means allocating the resources uh, to execute a particular job so these all are about the hadoop core components so without these uh, four components we cannot uh, start hadoop and do the big data analytics so uh, in uh, put up in a single line we can say uh, these are the fundamental components or fundamental minimum requirement for executing a big data analytical job in a hadoop environment without these four component we cannot go further so in this slide uh, this is a hadoop a distributed file system uh, which is a storage architecture as i pr- uh, previously explained so in this slide we will cover the detailed storage architecture which is a hdfs and how it works so hdfs is the basic fundamental primary storage system used by the hadoop applications so hdfs is mainly used to uh, storage purpose so it is designed for storing very large files with streaming data access patterns running on cluster of commodity hardware so as i previously explained it is based on uh, google file file system which is uh, distributed in nat- nature when it was developed so the hdfs is totally uh, developed from the architecture of google file system and it which is designed uh, to run on a large uh, number of clusters so you can uh, have a thousands of uh, computers can integrated into hdfs environment uh, and uh, hdfs is highly reliable and fault tolerant manner so reliability means even one machine fa- failure occurs we can recover uh, from another machines that is what uh, reliability and fault tolerance also, also suggest the same thing so hdfs is distributed which means uh, it is based on the cluster of uh, uh, thousands of nodes connected interconnected using high performance network so when you store uh, data large volume of data inside the hdfs it is not going to store it in a single machine because of its nature of distributed architecture it is going to divide the blocks and it will spread across multiple cluster uh, nodes across the uh, hdfs architecture and second one is it is highly scalable which means that for example today you are attaching uh, 100 nodes for certain uh, job tomorrow you are uh, like uh, you are getting uh, data sets which are very huge and 1000 nodes are not uh, uh, having a capable capability to store for example on the time you need you might need 2000 systems so 
Hadoop is a distributed architecture, so it is very easy to attach new computers to that architecture. So it is designed in such a way that Hadoop distributed architecture supports scalability future, which means even in future after five years, you need one lakh nodes needed to be added into the Hadoop cluster. It supports all the flexible flexibilities are available within the Hadoop environment. And uh, HDFS is originally written in Java, so Hadoop also written in Java, so it is very easy to integrate uh, these things inside the Hadoop uh, environment. And uh, the basic important thing when you store a file in uh, Hadoop is that Hadoop stores each and every uh, information as a uh, predefined set of uh, uh, storage size, we call it as a blocks. So the default size for Hadoop is 128 MB. So which means that irrespective of the size of the data you are going to store inside the Hadoop, it is going to store everything as 128 MB. For example, if I submit a file which is 1024 MB, then Hadoop not going to store entire 1024 MB of data in a single machine. It is going to divide 1024 MB of uh, large file into smaller blocks of files, uh, sm smaller blocks of multiple files. Each file's uh, size is 128 MB by default. So which means 1024 by uh, uh, like uh, you have a 128 MB size, which brings you like eight blocks. So Hadoop is going to separate the large huge file uh, in the same factor also. Even if you submit like uh, one terabytes of data, it will divide uh, that size uh, of uh, data set into equal size of 128 MB of smaller blocks and each blocks will be stored across thousands of uh, machines. That is the basic fundamental concept uh, of the storage mechanism uh, behind Hadoop. So the main main uh, primary aspect of uh, Hadoop is the block size, which is 128 MB by default, but it is not always necessary. For example, in Hadoop version one, it was 64 MB and in Hadoop version two and three, it was increased to 128 MB. And even if you want to increase the size, something like one, 250 size uh, MB size of block, you can configure in Hadoop configuration files that is possible so but uh, here we have we are mentioning 128 MB because 128 MB is uh, by default it is given by the Hadoop uh, architecture then next one is it creates multiple replicas so replica is a very very important factor which is directly uh, related to your reliability and uh, fault tolerant uh, factor that we have mentioned here so if you want to provide reliability and uh, fault tolerant means which can achieve this by using uh, replicas. So what are these replicas? So whenever you are storing information, it will divide into blocks of 128 MB, for example. And each of these blocks not only going to be stored in one machine. For example, if I am storing replica and the replication factor here I have mentioned as uh, 3 here. So which means that it is not going to store 120 of MB of a single block. It will create uh, th two more replicas. So total number of uh, blocks will be three. So each will be stored across different uh, blocks. In this way, multiple replicas uh, will be spread across the cluster. Here uh, in uh, Hadoop version 3 and 2, the default replication factor is 3, which means whatever the size of the file you are uh, giving it to the HDFS, it will divide it to, to the 128 MB blocks and each blocks will be copied two times and will uh, it will spread and store in some uh, random nodes across the cluster. Uh, so for example, if one node failure has been occurred and you are not able to retrieve the data from that uh, particular node, we can recover it from our replica nodes. So that is why we are uh, t telling that uh, HDFS is very highly reliable and fault tolerant. So even like uh, two system failure occurs and our data is stored on those two systems, still we can uh, recover uh, the same data from the third replica which is uh, stored somewhere else in the cluster. So that is why uh, Hadoop is a very highly reliable and fault tolerant unlike uh, other uh, uh, big data analytical uh, frameworks. So the replication factor here also uh, we have mentioned as uh, 3 and uh, this is the default value only and it is not mandatorily 3 always. If you want like uh, more uh, replicas stored for example 5, you can also configure that replication factor uh, during installation of the Hadoop. 
so the replication factor is uh, can be set by the users uh, to any number of value but uh, the larger the value it is uh, high the accessing time will required so that's why hadoop made it as a replication factor as 3 but uh, it can be like 4 or 5 or even you don't want any replication you can set the value as 1 in the uh, configuration files it is possible so that is all about the hdfs uh, next we will uh, cover about the basic architecture of the hdfs so hdfs uh, you can see the image here in this contains two important uh, component in hdfs architecture one is called as a name node so the basic fundamental blocks uh, of uh, hdfs architecture is one is name node another one is data node so what are these name nodes and data nodes so name node is the uh, and HDFS architecture, it is derived something like a master and slave architecture and master means one main node and slave means lots of uh, client nodes. We can uh, tame in that way. So HDFS contains two important nodes. One is called the name node. Another node is called as a data node. So the name node has the major responsibility in HDFS as it is responsible for handling the metadata. For example, I am a client. I am going to submit uh, one uh, large file which need to be stored under the Hadoop cluster. So what uh, name node does is whatever we have uh, seen in previous slide that first thing whenever you store a large file we need to convert that large file into a smaller individual blocks of 128 MB that is taken care by the name node alone and uh, we need to store also uh, we have already talked about replica factor. So once I converted into 128 MB of data of uh, blocks of each uh, node, we can store that 128 into multiple replicas I already told. The uh, default replication factor is 3. So I am going to store 3 copies of that 128 MB of data and I am going to store it in the 3 random machines. So the name node is responsible for handling these kinds of metadata which means that what is the name of the file I am going to store and how many replicas I want to store. For example here example 3. So uh, and the exact location where I want to store in the uh, these data nodes that path also need to be stored. So all this information will be containing in the name node. So in simply name node is the master node which has the responsibility of managing the metadata and splitting the uh, large files into smaller chunks of blocks and creating the replication and allocating the respective data nodes to storage. So all these things uh, can be taken care by the name node. Then what about the data node? Data nodes operation is very very simple. The one and only uh, role of data node is whatever the data which is provided by the your uh, name node it simply stores it so data nodes functionality is very very minimal it receives the data blocks from the name node and it simply stores so data nodes are the actual storage space for our uh, hdfs architecture whereas name node is like a coordinator tells like an administrator it tells what data how many replicas where it need to be stored so this architecture uh, we can see by a simple example in the next slide which will be very easy to understand. So here we have uh, put up name node and uh, data node architecture in uh, HDFS environment uh, F, F for an example. So what is name node? Actually I explained name node is the main which stores the metadata information. So the metadata information. What is the metadata? Metadata contains information about all the files which is being stored in the HDFS environment and how many replicas and how many blocks it is stored. So here for an example you can see uh, here we are mentioning one file. Uh, imagine that this is a huge file that we named this file as a giant file. Uh, this is the file submitted by the client. So once HDFS gets this file, what it does, it is going to create a R3. Here it is mentioned as R3 which means replication factor. So HDFS is going to receive that file and it is going to divide that file into multiple blocks. Here blocks can be represented, uh, you can see is A, B and C and etc. So these are the smaller size and the default size we have mentioned already 128 MB. So block A is 128 MB, block B 128 MB, block C uh, further like that. 
so a giant file will be divided into multiple uh, individual blocks smaller size blocks which is size of 128 mb and each blocks will be created as a three replicas so the default replication factor is three so for a block it will create uh, three copies and it will store it in different locations next three, here we can see that block a so block a is uh, uh, one block of that giant file which is size 128 mb which is the location where it is going to store so block a will be stored on the uh, these numbers represent the uh, data node so one means it will be stored on data node one so two means it will be stored on data node two so these are the data nodes so it will be stored on the respective data node three means it will be stored on data node three similarly you can see another block c block three is stored on the data nodes one two four you can ask the question where why one two four these are the replication factor because we have default replication factor as three so each block will be created three replicas and uh, that will be assigned uh, different uh, nodes uh, depends on the availability and uh, there is another concept called rack awareness Dep rack awareness means which is the closest rack where it will assign so uh, block a will be stored on one two three nodes and block c will be stored on node number one two and four uh, likewise uh, Hadoop uh, stores the information so for that only uh, HDFS uses the name node now you have a practical exposure to the name node so the name node fundamentally used for uh, managing the storage architecture and where each node has been stored and uh, how many blocks and exact data node where that nodes uh, has to be stored all these mappings can be taken by, by the uh, name node again the responsibility of data node it is very simple data node is only uh, task of a data node is whatever uh, the blocks assigned to it it receives from the name node and simply stores it so the one and only responsibility of data node in uh, hdfs architecture is to simply store the data given by the name node that's all uh, so here you can see some of the signals like heartbeat signal block report load balancing and replication so replication we already know every time a name node sends the number of copies need to be stored in the data nodes and heartbeat is the signal uh, which has been sent from data node to the uh, name node so basically heartbeat is like uh, uh, informing the name node that that particular data node is alive for example uh, if a data node has failure occurs this data node has been failed so it will be uh, name node cannot uh, further it cannot uh, contact the name uh, sorry data node one for example a client want to execute certain job which need block a that block a is stored in uh, data node one and currently that uh, data node uh, due to some uh, external factor it has been failed so if the client want to have access to that uh, data node how name node knows whether the data node is alive or not because without that information uh, name node will try to access the data node but it will get longer delays because that node actually failed so how do uh, name node knows that because for that only we are using the signal called heartbeat signal so heartbeat signal is a signal which has been uh, periodically sent by the data node to the name node to intimate the name node that the data node is avail available and it is still alive so that is the signal so heartbeat signal basically used to, to uh, notify the name node that all the data nodes are well and good and are still functioning properly so for example what happens if data node fails means uh, the heartbeat will be sent once in a three seconds so that is the default uh, interval uh, set by the hadoop uh, environment so for example after three seconds also if the name node does not receive any uh, signals uh, from data node 1 which means that it doesn't re uh, receive any signal this heartbeat signal from the data node after 3 seconds it will assume that the uh, data node uh, has been failed and uh, it will mark uh, this uh, data node 1 as a failed so if client want to access to any uh, files which are stored in the block uh, for example data node 1 instead of uh, referring to the data node 1 it will refer to the some other nodes where replica is stored that is the simple uh, concept of a Hadoop distributed file system so even failure occurs uh, during uh, the heartbeat signal it knows which nodes are alive which nodes are failed so it can easily recover the data from other nodes where the replicas are stored 
and block report means that every time whenever you are uh, executing any block storing any block uh, the number of blocks which has been stored in the data node will be intimated to the name node for reference so these are the important factors uh, regarding to the storage architecture of uh, uh, hadoop environment which is hdfs so this is the way uh, hdfs uh, stores the data split up the data and stores the data and recover from failure so in the next we are going to see about the map reduce as i explained in the, our previous slide uh, map reduce is also essential for uh, execution of the uh, um, map reduce uh, like uh, hadoop execution so map reduce is actually a execution engine for our hadoop environment so previously we have uh, seen hdfs so you have to remember that hdfs responsibility is only one which is used for storage purpose whereas MapReduce is our execution engine which means MapReduce is the core uh, tool which is required to execute any kind of a big data analytical work. So uh, there are two separate uh, aspects we have to consider here. HDFS is used only as a storage medium whereas MapReduce is used as the uh, processing engine uh, which is the actual execution engine of our big data environment. So MapReduce is originally also built upon Java, so it can highly integratable with Hadoop. And it was originally Java developed in 2004 uh, as a paper titled MapReduce Simplified Data Processing on Large Clusters published by the Google. Again, you can see HDFS also derived from Google file system developed by Google. Again, MapReduce also uh, the original development of MapReduce started in Google. Later, it was released uh, as an open source and Apache acquired the license for it. So MapReduce currently available as a Apache open source license 2.0. It is also free execution engine. So MapReduce uh, is actually a programming model. Uh, for writing application that can process big data in parallel on multiple nodes. That is the power of uh, MapReduce. So like HDFS, uh, for example, if you are submitting a very huge volume of data, for example, uh, uh, two terabytes of data set you are submitting, submitting into the MapReduce for execution, it is not going to execute everything in a single machine. So it is also a distributed architecture. So it has thousands of machines attached to it. So what uh, actually MapReduce does, the huge volume of uh, data set, it will divide into smaller tasks and each task will be executed on individual machines, uh, which is connected to the Hadoop cluster and smaller chunks will be parallelly simultaneously executed in multiple nodes. So the speed of uh, processing is very high here because each node only going to execute a very small portion of the large job. So each executing at the same time parallelly and simultaneously. So the time uh, got reduced. So map reduce is very highly fast fasting. So the uh, basic uh, fundamental uh, terminologies which are related to the map reduce are so whenever you want to execute a certain kind of a job you need input file for that map reduce get the input file from the uh, HDFS and once you are processing that input file and you get the output the output will be stored on the uh, again back to the HDFS file system. So the major input uh, for map reduce is from the HDFS. So it doesn't matter. Uh, what type of big data analytics you want to do all your input data sets uh, be it 1 MB or be it like uh, 1 terabyte or be it like uh, 1 zettabytes of data everything can be retrieved from uh, your HDFS uh, so it can easily access the HDFS and retrieve all the input files from there and it will process all those uh, big uh, data sets and it will immediately return the output again the output by default which will be stored in the HDFS file system itself. So the MapReduce uh, framework takes care of uh, like uh, scheduling the job, monitoring them and re-execute the failed task. So as I explained previously, MapReduce is a processing engine or we can call it as an execution engine. So if your client submit the job and what happens if multiple clients submit the job? So the map main responsibility of MapReduce in that case is scheduling the task. 
so depends on the number of tasks assigned to map reduce it will schedule allocate the time where uh, it needs to be executed what time it needs to be executed and uh, which machines it need to be executed everything taken care by the scheduling task once uh, task has been scheduled it start to process those uh, data and during the processing uh, map reduce also Uh, takes care the responsibility of monitoring them whether the task has been correctly executed or not other any task has been failed or not that is also major responsibility of map reduce so simply say the major responsibilities of map reduce is scheduling monitoring and once any uh, task has been failed it need to reschedule and reexecute it so those are the uh, major responsibilities of map reduce and then typically map reduce can uh, consist of uh, two different kind of uh, nodes similar to your hdfs one is like uh, compute node uh, which is actual processing engine uh, which is the core responsibility of map reduce another one is storage nodes uh, which is where the input files are stored so whatever the data analytics you need you need some uh, certain uh, input nodes so it will access those uh, from hdfs hdfs is your uh, default storage uh, architecture so it gets the data from the storage node and uh, to execution part similar to hdfs map reduce framework contains two important tasks namely uh, one is called as a uh, like uh, master uh, job tracker one is job tracker another one is you can uh, call it as a task tracker so the major role of a job tracker which is like uh, your hdfs name node similar to your hdfs name node here in map reduce uh, tool the job tracker has the overall responsibility of uh, where the job needs to be executed the scheduling uh, everything and maintenance and uh, monitoring everything can taken care by your job tracker and what is the role of your uh, task tracker task tracker simply used for execution purpose only which is quite very similar to your hdfs architecture also so the job tracker takes care of responsibility of uh, which job need to be scheduled first where that job need to be executed which node it has to be uh, executed and monitoring whether the and uh, execution is properly uh, executed or failure occurs these kind of administrative uh, tasks can taken by the job tracker and whenever it comes to processing task tracker uh, takes care of the responsibility so task tracker is used for execution purpose only so the master node is re responsible for scheduling and uh, monitoring and reexecuting the jobs the slaves like uh, task trackers only responsible for executing uh, that uh, task as explained by the uh, your master node so in this image you can clearly see that uh, this uh, map reduce architecture where here uh, you can see that your uh, job tracker job tracker is mentioned here you can see job tracker so the, the major role of the job tracker is scheduling and uh, like uh, keeping track of uh, what are the task trackers are available uh, whether the task trackers are uh, executing the jobs or not whether it is progressing or not and monitoring whether any failed tasks are there in case of failure it has to reexecute so that it has to reschedule all those administrative tasks can taken by the job tracker then simply Uh, these task trackers is uh, the client nodes or so you can call it as a slave nodes in the cluster so thousands of uh, task trackers are available in your uh, hadoop environment map reduce environment so so those simple function is execute uh, execute the uh, whatever the job submitted by the job tracker so ja task tracker simply runs the tasks which has been uh, submitted by the job tracker and report uh, back to whether that has been successfully completed execution or not to the job tracker so if you want to execute uh, any task in uh, task tracker it has divided into two sections called map task and reduce task so map task and reduce task is responsible for uh, getting the uh, huge volume of uh, input file and dividing the input file into the smaller number of uh, blocks and executing it and uh, return back the results that is why task tracker uses map task and reduce task so these are the uh, core responsibilities of uh, map reduce so again i will tell map reduce is simply a 
core execution or processing engine of uh, Hadoop environment where it uh, simply executes all the jobs submitted by the client. So this is uh, our uh, final uh, whole picture of uh, Hadoop ecosystem. So, so far we have covered about the uh, 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 main architecture, sorry, main architecture called HDFS, which is uh, like a storage architecture. And we have seen about the YARN, uh, which is uh, basically an uh, architecture which is used for uh, uh, cluster resource management and job scheduling. So these are the two, uh, two uh, core components that we have uh, seen in our uh, previous slides but apart from that uh, this picture illustrates the uh, entire tools and components which is supported by the Hadoop environment. So in this slide I am not going to give a detailed in-depth uh, description about uh, all these components but you can see uh, the four fundamental component uh, the minimal requirement for execution of your uh, Hadoop uh, ecosystem for uh, executing a big data analytics is two major components called as a uh, Hadoop HDFS which is a default uh, storage architecture inside the Hadoop ecosystem and Hadoop YARN. So Hadoop YARN uh, integrated as uh, MapReduce also. So MapReduce inside uh, Hadoop YARN it is being uh, def by default it is integrated. So storage you can use HDFS, resource management you can use uh, Hadoop YARN. So these two components are uh, final core essential component to do very minimal big data analytics. For example, if uh, you want to do more functionalities, for example, uh, uh, that uh, technology giants like Apple or Netflix, uh, these are the companies uh, they are doing real time analytics and they are using lot of machine learning algorithms for those kind of tasks they cannot depend on these two, two tools alone. These two tools YARN and HDFS are minimum required to uh, execute a Hadoop engine but you can add many number of uh, tools as per uh, requirement of uh, organizational capacity the, and their need. So here uh, we have listed so many tools which is integrated inside the uh, Hadoop uh, ecosystem currently and it is uh, not going to be stable because in future uh, some other third party apps also it is possible that they can be also integrated into the uh, Hadoop ecosystem as technology evolves. So I will highlight some of the core uh, tools which can be uh, handy in case of if you are uh, interested in doing the big data analytics with Hadoop. For example, uh, if you are doing big data analytics with the Hadoop and you want to do uh, the large scale uh, cluster management because uh, we, here we are using a resource manager as a uh, yarn but yarn is not capable of that for example you want to do some real time uh, uh, analytics uh, and you want to have a large scale cluster capacity and you want to uh, alternative something like uh, uh, like uh, what we can call something like uh, Kubernetes currently we can see Kubernetes or Docker instead of that Hadoop provides another uh, wonderful tool uh, to replace that called as a Mesos. So uh, Mesos is actually a third party thing but it is integrated into the uh, Hadoop environment which can do the resource management in case of a real time analytics and if you are dealing with very a huge volume of uh, cluster sets which is basically based uh, some technology like Kubernetes or Docker. In those uh, environment instead of Kubernetes or Docker you can go for Hadoop Mesos which is integrated into it. And similar to that if you want to uh, for example coordinating all the tasks for example in my uh, Hadoop ecosystem I have integrated uh, YARN and I have integrated uh, HDFS and I have integrated Mesos and I have integrated something like Hive and I have integrated uh, like uh, uh, Google uh, data pipelining like uh, NiFi and I am using some machine learning algorithms. So now I am using 7 or 8 different tools to uh, bring the coordination among them. Hadoop Zookeeper that uh, I have mentioned here, Zookeeper is a handy. So Zookeeper is a very very important component inside the Hadoop uh, ecosystem and Zookeeper is not necessary if you are only dealing with the YARN and HDFS. For example, if you are dealing with multiple component, multiple different types of uh, technologies that I have mentioned here, if you need coordination among the all those tools, then you can use uh, the co Zookeeper as a coordinator, uh, which is very handy. Similar to that, for example, what happens if I want to do some in-memory data analytics? That is what uh, we have mentioned in the here 
in-memory processing. In-memory processing means in Hadoop MapReduce and HDFS environment, whenever you are executing any uh, program or any job application, it will actually uh, refer to the main memory and the load uh, load the data set into the uh, sec uh, like uh, sorry from secondary memory into mem main memory which will be time consuming what happens everything i want to execute inside the ram only i don't want to go for some uh, secondary storage for those kind of environment particularly in real time environment you can use apache spark apache spark inside the hadoop ecosystem is a wonderful uh, tool which is used for in-memory analysis and comparing to your uh, MapReduce processing engine, Apache Spark is like uh, 10 times faster uh, in case of uh, in-memory processing. So every data will be stored directly onto your RAM instead of your secondary memory and everything will be executed 10 times much fa faster than uh, your uh, MapReduce environment. So if you really want to do a very higher processing but your memory is somewhat limited size means you can go for in-memory analytics and for example what you need to do some uh, stream processing and otherwise you can do some uh, real-time processing for example like facebook you want to do some facebook analytics and you want to do facebook analytics as the data arrives for those kind of uh, real-time processing we can call it as a real-time processing otherwise it can be called as a stream processing for those kind of environment, we can go for uh, Apache Storm or Apache Kafka. Apache Kafka is very good uh, data store for streaming. Storm also very good tool for streaming. So Hadoop has multiple tools for depends on the need of an organization. So if you need some kind of a real time stream processing, you no need to depend on HDFS and YARN. Directly you can go for Apache Storm or Kafka. And if you want to implement any no SQL database because uh, databases which is very essential for storing any kind of data, Hadoop has a default database inside it and it is a, a SQL dependent one which is called Hive. And if you want no SQL database, if you are using a database which is like a structured data, unstructured data and particularly lot of unstructured data, you can go for HBase. So HBase is a column oriented storage which is inside the Hadoop environment which is used to store highly uh, unstructured kind of a database. Similar to that, if you want to do uh, some kind of a scripting, you can go for like uh, uh, Apache PIC, which is very useful for writing a PIC kind of script kind of queries. And if you want, and again I said, this is the very, very major important component inside the Hadoop machine learning. So if you want to do any kind of a big data analytics using machine learning libraries, Apache provides rich sets of libraries. For example, you can see here, MAD library. Another one is called Mahout, another one is called Spark ML and recently another uh, is called, called PySpark. Uh, we can call it as a spy, uh, PySpark. PySpark is uh, actually a, a recent development in uh, integrated in uh, Hadoop environment where uh, whenever you try to install a Spark, it will defaultly in, uh, you can install as a PySpark which will be used for uh, machine learning kind of data analytics for using artificial intelligence algorithm. So Hadoop provides three different sets of tools for machine learning algorithm. If you want to run machine learning algorithm and if you want to leverage the capacity of real AI capacity, you can use Madlib or Mahout or Spark machine learning libraries. There are rich, rich sets of other libraries also been currently integrated as technology evolves. So this is the basic outline of Hadoop ecosystem. Uh, so this is the uh, the true power of Hadoop. So using uh, Hadoop, you can do any kind of a big data analytics and it has a very, very rich set of uh, tool set inside the Hadoop uh, framework. So any kind of an organization which wants to do any kind of very complex big data analytics, Hadoop provides each and every tool required for executing it. So that's all about uh, today's session. I hope everyone have a clear idea about what is Hadoop and what are the basic components of Hadoop to deal with the big data analytics. Thank you all.